Hello, everyone. Well, I'm sorry I'm a little bit late today, but I got a lot of good excuses. <laughs> excuses I have, but excuses do not give classes. So here I am giving a class. Ran out of excuses. I'm now in Miron. Huh? Miron. That's where Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is buried. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the great Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, that he wrote the book called the Zohar, and also he was the greatest of what we call the Tanaim, of the, the those who uh, wrote the Mishnah, who are quoted in the Mishnah and in the Talmud, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So, I, in fact, I was just by his grave just now, just by his grave. It's, it's about a half an hour walk from here, and it's hot outside. It's warm outside. I thought it would be colder. Anyway, those are a couple of the excuses I've got. If I give, tell all the excuses, we won't even have a class. So here we go. What did we learn yesterday? Yesterday we learned about this Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he started a whole new era in Judaism. What is Judaism? Judaism is based on the Torah. Huh? The Jewish people, all of them, Together, about 3 million people, it says there were 600,000 males, just males, from the age of 20 and up. Some people say from 20 to 50, what happened? That's right. Yeah. Oh, something happened. Okay. So somebody still got their um, cellular phone or something. So, Rabbi Shem, one second, let me turn this thing off over here. One minute, one minute. We said the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he started a whole new area in, era in Judaism. What's the purpose? What's the whole essence of, of Judaism? Is the Torah. The, the Jewish people received the Torah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob says that they received, they knew what it said in the Torah before it was given, but it, it's, what was the purpose of giving it? So when God gave the Torah, he gave himself. He put godliness in, in easy access to all the Jewish people. And the Jewish people are chosen to bring this godliness into the world. What's godliness? Godliness is health, world health, spiritual health, physical health, emotional health, intellectual health. People feel they have eyes and they use them to see God with. They use, they use them, ears, they hear good things, <clears throat> with to do good things, to see, to see good things, to feel good things, to understand good things. And nowadays, there's a lot of neg negativity in the world. So the Jewish people are here to bring positivity. That's the creator. And, but it was hidden in the Torah. So <clears throat> when Adam ate from the tree, is this good became covered over. And the first person to reveal that was Abraham. That was almost 2,000 years after Adam. And he started realizing that the good in the world was concealed. Uh, then came 400 years later, about 400 years after Abraham, a little bit more, and the Jews received the Torah. And they received the Torah. That gave them, that, 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 that was <clears throat> to rectify the sin of Adam. Now we could do exactly what God wants, the way God wants, etc. When God wants. <clears throat> but, but, but the Torah... Inside of it, the godliness of the Torah was concealed to the degree that people ignored it. And they went against Moses. They went against Moshe. M Moses, he understood what was going on, but everybody else did not. They understood. I mean, they, they felt the outside of the Torah. They did what it said, but they didn't really feel the godliness in the Torah. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he stressed and he revealed the godliness in the Torah, the secrets of the Torah, the mysteries of the Torah. That's how this book, Song of Songs, starts off. God will kiss us with kiss of his mouth, kisses of his mouth. The Torah is God's mouth, and the kisses, that's the secrets of the Torah. So Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he made these secrets accessible to all mankind. But mankind didn't really, you know, use them in the proper, in a total way. They didn't digest them until the Baal Shem Tov came along. And the Baal Shem Tov, he just began until the first Rabbi of Chabad came along. And then we can really start to understand, and that's what we're doing now. But the one who really began this whole business was Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and that's what we're learning about. So we said that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he had the ability to bring the highest aspects of the Torah, namely this 
the holiness of the Torah that's so holy that you should never stop learning Torah every moment of your life. And he was able to make that level accessible to even the most simple person that had no ability whatsoever to learn Torah, just to say Shema Yisrael in the morning and the evening, that Rabbi Shimon had the ability to do. To bring the holiness of the essence of the Torah and the secrets of the Torah down to the simplest person that the best that he could do as far as Torah goes, is just say six words in the morning and six words in the evening, Shema Yisrael. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Good? Okay. So you can bring the highest to the lowest. Nach mirror even more. There we go. Nach mirror even more. Nid nor not only. Had Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai called the Rashbi. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he drew down. Bechinas Nitzchus, the eternalness, the infinite of the Torah in the physical world. As the world is, in a normal with business, and people are, are going about their normal daily activities, and to do it according to the Torah, Barum, because I'll be Torah according to the Torah is Dach Vasafta Deganecha. According to the Torah, it says that you're supposed to do work, you're supposed to plow, and you're supposed to seed. You don't have to learn Torah all the time. And that it says it's enough for Dailam, sorry, Daila Olam, and it's enough for the world as far as the secrets of the Torah and the mysteries of the Torah and the godliness of the Torah. Rabbi Shimon said, it's good enough that me and my son know. We're, we're, we're the examples of the world. Something like the whole world is supposed to be holy, and it will be in the time of the Mashiach. But until then, it's good enough, just the holy temple is good enough. But like one place. <clears throat> Nor Er Hot Noch Metakengan, not only did Rabbi Shimon bring Torah into the world, but he actually physically fixed up the world, was Tikkun fixing up the world, Tikkun Olam. Tikkun Olam is a big thing nowadays in Judaism, people of the people of this day, Tikkun Olam fixing up the world. Well, it's true, you have to really fix up the world, right? That's sort of a, a jab at the religious people that they're devoted only to spiritual things. Then there's these non-religious Jews that say, say, we're fixing up the world, tikkun olam. Well, the fact is, is that the Torah is also fixing up the world. And if you want to fix up the world, you have to do it according to the Torah. And that's what Rabbi Shimon did. Tikkun, fixing up the world, is dach shayech, nor, and azach only to a thing, which is shalok of the boy. It's not the way it's supposed to be. When darf ab and tikkun, it has to be fixed up. So Rabbi Shimon was able to draw down Torah to learn Torah, even to people that weren't able to learn. and But even lower than that, he was able to fix up things that were not the way they were supposed to be in the world. How did he do that? We'll see the story. We'll see his nitga then in an oven. It wasn't in a way as <clears throat> then Erhat Darzen, when he saw something missing, when he saw something that was wrong, hot on hot in nit, you can't solve it, you couldn't bear it, is then, then he would go and fix it up. Nor, what did Rabbi Shimon do? He didn't wait for bad things to happen. Nor, er hot a line, gezucht, he looked around, on nach gefrakt, and he asked people, eicha milsa, is there anything the boy that I can fix? It says that Rabbi Shimon, after the 13 years that he was in the cave, so he came out to the city of Tiveri, it says, Tiveri is not far away from where Rabbi Shimon was. Rabbi Shimon was in the caves, in, in, I guess, near Meron, actually. And he came to, to, to Tiveri, and he asked the people, is there anything that I can fix up that you can't do that you need me to do? See, his epic is there anything, a thing in the world which has to be fixed up? Veter, the second to fix it up. On Geredet, Hadzich das Fregen, and he asked on the place where is a doubt? Right, something. So they said, yes, we have a place. I'm sorry, they, they said, well, there is a place. There is a place where we don't know if there's dead bodies buried there or not. We don't know. We have a doubt. Could be there were. Now, if there are dead bodies buried in a place and you don't know where they are, you, you know that there are dead bodies there, but you don't know where they are. So the whole place, Kohanim, uh, priests, I guess you call it, but Kohanim are not allowed to go there. A coin is not a 
So they said, listen, is, if there's a way you can find out where these dead bodies are buried. Hepachator, yes, sir, the, 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 you know, there's something which is impure. When a tumor goof is the, the worst type of impurity, death, which is called the father, grandfather of, of impurity. The worst of impurity there is. When odd dem order, in that place, Rabbi Shimon, he fixed it up. He walked over, he said, oh, here's a dead body buried, here's a dead body. He knew. Nitnor for Yisraelim, un Levim, or Oich for Kohanim. He said, there's a place where now everybody can go. Not only Yisraelim can go there, and there's a regular Jews or Levites can go there, but every Jew can go, even the Kohanim can go there. Because like I say, a Kohan is not supposed to pass over a place that has a dead body hidden. So he knew where they were. How did he know? He was a holy person. He knew where it was. As then, Hat Rabbi Shimon, Yezich, Yekent, Arup Farlazan, Rabbi Shimon was allowed to let himself down and fix it up. What Davka Noach if them was there is not Allah. How could Rabbi Shimon already have this ability to find impurity hidden in the ground and fix it up? This he had the ability he had only after he was in the <clears throat> in the cave for 13 years, and he elevated himself to this tremendously high pure level. Zion Dikdam when he was 13 years there, only then and then and he wrote the Zohar, then he was able to raise to such a higher level that what did he do? He fixed up, found where dead bodies were. Hot Erge Kent, then he could he could not be, but previously he was not able to let himself down into the world. Nor Oich Metakens and for certainly couldn't fix up a thing which had to be fixed up. So we see that's what Rabbi Shimon did. Not only did he bring Torah down to the ignorant people, he even brought holiness down to places where there were dead bodies. Noch Miras the Rebbe even more. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai had gazakt, he said, Yochal Ani, Lif Torah, Kol Olam Kulo, Minadin. He said, I am enough to exempt the whole entire world from any sort of severe decrees. Even if everyone else is sinning and the world, the, the Jews deserve, God forbid, something bad to happen to them, Rabbi Shimon said, in my life, it's not going to happen. I, can, I exempt the whole world from negativity. As Eric can, that he can... Malamet Zachut, that he could find some sort of a merit. Zain Unarot Neman, and bringing down to, and removing, I'm sorry, any sort of strict judgment from all of the Jews. Zayzalan Nit Gestrofen, that they shouldn't be punished for Zain Zin for any sins. This is even a lower level. After the sin of the tree of knowledge, death was part of the nature of creation. As is nit durach dem bechira adam. Death is we we. It's not part of our choice. A person, whether he wants to or not, everybody dies. That's what happened after Adam ate from the tree. He brought death into the world. But so it's not our choice. But sins, this is a thing. This is even lower than death. This is using your free will to go against God. Well, thus bring this brings men around during Bechira because sin a person, a Jew, can do by means of his own free will. And from this thing, and nevertheless, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he could even go lower than death, in other words. But room because in order to learn merit and to find merit on the generation, it has to be a person. Uh, in im a Reintrachten, because in order to fix up a person's sin, he has to think about the sin. So im zich a rap in order to bring himself down, in order to fix up what's wrong. That's what Rabbi Shimon was able to do. And D, you read in this descent, is nit al derech vi, like it's not the way that it says is lech raid, like God said to Moses, because the Jewish people were sinning. So God said, you have to go down from your greatness. 
Here we're talking about Rabbi Shimon. He went down in order to fix up the world. As men, it's not that he had to go down. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai alone, on his own, he decided with his own desire that he was going to exempt the whole entire world from anything that was bad. I mean, this this demanded a lot of attention and a lot of, how do you say, uh, <clears throat> disturbing Rabbi Shimon from his holiness and his greatness to come down into the different sins of all the Jewish people. And never said, he said, I can bring, I can remove from all the sins. There was the second Rebbe of Chabad, once he showed somebody his arm, his arms was all like whatever, wrinkled or something. It was all like, and he said, this, this, this that I have, this comes from your sins, from the sins that you did, because I had to come down and fix them up so that you wouldn't get punished, as this is what, what happened to me. Rabbi Shimon took on the sins of all the Jewish people. That's pretty pretty heavy. When their koach and the power from Ruts and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai to come down so low is because Davka only because of the fact that he alone was so tremendously high. It was given from Bnei Aliyah, who is one of the highest people, which they are very few. I mean, we can find this also today. You know, we can find this also today. Let's say you think that a certain race or a certain religion or something, whatever, that these people are very bad and they're very evil and that they're very, you know, that this religion is terrible and this what a philosophy is awful. And then you have one person that he like saves a whole entire town or he, uh, you know, does some amazingly good gift. And this person says, oh, I happen to be from, you know, such and such a religion. Says, what? I thought all those people were destructive. They were terrible. Nah. You know, maybe, not necessarily, you know, maybe they, they missed the point. Or something. Well, all of a sudden you start thinking differently about all these people, right? You understand that whatever, all the, you know, Mexicans are all bandits or something, or all the, the what do they say, the, the, the Scottish people are all stingy. And suddenly you find one person who's a Mexican, he's tremendously, you know, generous and honest. And one person is, the, 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 you know, the, a, a Scottish person that he, the, he's just tremendously he's open handed and he gives it. All of a sudden you think, well, you know, I was wrong about all these people. The same thing, Rabbi Shimon Bayechai, he was whole, whole, so holy spiritually that even if all the Jews would do sins, is his holiness and his spiritual love was good to make a good name for all the Jews. Let's see just one moment how much how far we have to go here. Right, so we see that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was not just a regular person and he wasn't even a regular Jew. <clears throat> and he wasn't even a regular holy Jew or a regular one of the Tanaim. Tanaim, they said the, what they're called the Pharisees. <clears throat> that he had the ability, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, had the ability to, to, to actually <clears throat> utilize for the first time the purpose that the Torah was given, and that is, is to reveal pure, godly life in this physical world. That's what Rabbi Shimon did, to fix the world up, to make the world a place that's happy, alive, meaningful. Rabbi Shimon. And this was passed down to us, and eventually it came down to the Rebbe's of Chabad, and that's what we're going to say now. Sipuri Rizal, the stories of the rabbis, Vegan der Hanhaga, regarding the conduct of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the other Sipurim, like all the stories from the Torah, Zaina Hora, they are a teaching. When the Nasin is Koach, and they also are an empowering, they give us ability. <clears throat> for all the doors from all the generations after him, but for Adam especially, especially for the doors for those last generations, right now, in other words, was Haben, which were Zohar given to the revelation of the inside of the Torah, and namely the teachings of the Rebbe Shimon Bar Yochai that have been spread out and digested by Hasid al-Chabad. As Darvzan Yafutsu Manatacha, that says there has to be the spreading out of your wellsprings outward. <clears throat> this is a sentence in, in Proverbs. 
mean, this is one of the basics of, 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 of mottos of Chabad Hasidic. Where does it come from? It comes from like this, that the Baal Shem Tov, that he was the beginning of the Hasidic movement. He was like about 350 years ago. 300 years ago. He had an experience when he was like 27 years old on Rosh Hashanah that he his consciousness <clears throat> well it was revealed to him all these upper worlds and he went into the chamber of the Mashiach <clears throat> and he asked the Mashiach when are you going to come and the Mashiach said I'm going to come when your wellsprings your deep teachings are spread out to the furthest place Yafutsu should be spread out Mayanatecha your deep teachings Chutzah to the farthest places okay what were the deep teachings of the Baal Shem Tov they were <clears throat> uh, uh, I uh a chewed up and digested way of understanding, a practical way of understanding the teachings of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So in order to understand this, there's another story, which is also very popular in Chabad, one second, which is very popular in Chabad, and that is a story about the first Rebbe of Chabad. The first Rebbe of Chabad, he was the <clears throat> three generations, so to speak, from the Baal Shem Tov. In other words, there's a Baal Shem Tov that was Rabbi Yisrael Baal Shem, and he had a pupil, which is called the Magid of Mezrich, Rabbi Shlosh, Rabbi Dovber of Mezrich, Dovber. And Rabbi Dovber of Mezrich, he had a lot of pupils. Some of them say 60 pupils. The youngest of all of them was the first Rabbi of Chabad. And he was, in a way, the, the, the most gifted of all of them. All of them were tremendously gifted. And there was a story that all three of them were walking together in the street, and this will be the story. Usually I tell the story in the afternoon, this will be your story. So the first Rabbi of Chabad was walking, his name was Rabbi Shner Zalman. He's the one that wrote the book, the Tanya, and the book, the, the Kuti Torah, that we're learning from in the morning. So Rabbi Shner Zalman was walking in the, in the street together with his teacher, the Magid of Mezrich, and one of the elder pupils of the Magid of Mezrich, whose name was Rabbi Pinchas of Koretz. And the Magid of Mezrich, Rabbi, Rabbi Dovber, the teacher, he would spread out these teachings to everybody. And Rabbi Pinchas, of course, was very opposed to it. And as they were walking down the street, so they saw, there's different versions of the story, but this is how I heard it. They saw a page of this Hasidic teaching in the street, rolling around in the street, something that was in the gutter of the street. And he said, See, that's what happens. Rabbi Pinchas, of course, said, see, I'm right. Look what happened. You take the, the deepest secrets of the Torah, and now you are cheapening them. They're rolling around in the streets. You're, you're, you're shaming the Torah. And the first Rebbe of Chabad said, I want to tell you a parable. The parable goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a great king. And this great king had a son that he loved very much. And the son became sick. And he brought all sorts of doctors and professors and miracle makers, and no one could help. And the son got, his condition deteriorated, worse, deteriorated. And he got worse and worse. And finally, there came one wise man, one <clears throat> especially uh, talented person. And he said, I know how to cure the king's son. I know, I know what the disease is, and I know what the cure is. <clears throat> but I don't know if you're going to want to do it. The king said, I don't care about the disease. What's the cure? So he said, the cure is <clears throat> you have to uh, take the diamond from your crown. It was this huge diamond. You know, worth who knows, mil hundreds of millions of dollars, pure diamond, and you have to crush it up. And then you have to put it into water and you have to pour it into his mouth. But he's pretty far gone. He's been sick for a long time. And it's a doubt if anyone is, is going to go into his mouth. And even if it does go into his mouth, there's doubt if he's going to swallow it. But if he does manage to swallow even a little bit of it, it'll save his life. So the king said 100%, took off his crown. They took the, the, the diamond. He ground it up, which that itself was uh, an accomplishment. And he mixed it into water. He knew exactly how to do it. And he said, here it goes. And he started to pour into the king's, the, the prince's, the poor unconscious prince's mouth. And just like he said, you know, the majority of it didn't even go in. And that little bit that went in, it didn't get past his teeth. 
And that which got past his teeth, he spit out, he's coughing. But a little tiny bit of it did go in. Here's all this precious diamond that's all scattered all over the floor. And it embarrasses the king. The king now doesn't have this big diamond. There's a big sort of empty space in his crown. But a little tiny bit of it went in and the king's son was saved. And it was worthwhile. Said the first Rebbe of Chabad, the king is God. His son is the Jewish people. The Jewish people are sick. They become unconscious. They're in all comatose. And the only way to save them is to, by taking the king's crown. That's the Torah. And the diamond of the king's crown. That's the secrets of the Torah. And to grind it up. And to pour it into the king's. The, the secrets of the Torah. That's what Rabbi Shimon Meryochai brought into the world. To grind it up properly. And to mix it. And to administer it to the Jewish people. The unconscious Jewish people. That's the teachings of the Magid of Mezrish. That's these teachings of Hasidut. <clears throat> And that's why you see it spread all over the, 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 the streets, because that's like the diamond that the king's son was not able to swallow. But the little bit that he will swallow, that's going to save his life. So that's the idea of spreading out these mayanot, the teachings, the deep teachings, the diamond of Hasidut out to the outermost places, to the most unconscious Jews, namely <clears throat> uniting these two uh, polar opposites, the deepest secrets to the furthest, lowest places, the deepest Mayanot, the deepest wellsprings to the outmost places. Mendarf, Neman, Nit, Nor, we can not only take the river, a river, namely the revealed Torah, and Nit on the May Mayan, and not just the water of the wellspring, but the wellspring itself, the source of the wellspring. And that's the source of the Torah, and spreading this out until it gets chutzah to the furthest away places. There's the the outermost places which you're sure that there's nothing more distant than that. Does this, this means as does nit kind chutzi men, there can't be anything further than this. Right? Jews are the furthest away, furthest away Jewish. Jews that don't even know they're Jews. And you can see this a lot of Jews. There are there are cases like this. I don't know if I mean I can't judge what's the furthest, what's the not, but there's Jews that are like four generations of Jews that didn't know they're Jews in Russia. And they were just totally, you know, not circumcised, and they never saw a rabbi in their life or anything like that. But they heard from their grandmother that her grandmother was Jewish. They saw their grandmother once in a while light a candle, you know, on, on Shabbat or on Yom Kippur or something like that. And they discovered they were Jewish. All of a sudden they said, I want a circumcision, I want to put on the film. This spreading out the wellsprings out. This is a preparation to Atimar the Mashiach will come, coming of the Mashiach. Was oich by him, but also by him, Vetachat and Hanaga from Yehud Beis of the Mashiach will also do the same thing. Now, again, we said this a lot of times. <clears throat> What's the whole idea of Mashiach? Mashiach is to fix up the sin of the tree of knowledge. When Adam ate from the tree, when Adam ate from the tree, what happened? It became difficult to think about God. People started, why? Because what replaced it? People started thinking about themselves, right? Adam had this decision to make, should I do what God wants or should I do what I want? And he saw this tree that Adam gave, that his wife gave to him. Anyway, she thought it was good and it was nice. But then so he said, okay, you know, I'll do, I'll do what I want. And he ate from the tree. Whatever his reasons were, let's say he didn't want to go against God. Nevertheless, he did what he did. From that time on, man was only with great difficulty could you think about God. Why? Because God stopped being real. What was became real was me, my feelings, my thought. And God is this thing that he created us, maybe, who knows, gives us life, whatever. What's real is me. And so people weren't able to think about the creator. The whole purpose of Hasidut is giving ideas that we can think about the creator. And that's going to prepare the world for Mashiach. As soon as we learn the ideas of Hasidut, we started realizing, hey, well, I'm thinking about God all the time, and I don't know what God is. I don't have any feeling of God. I'm reading what a person who feels God wrote, and that's what I should be feeling. And it's good. I also want to feel the Creator. So that's what Hasidut did. It prepares the whole world to have a longing for this revelation of God that only Mashiach will bring. 
that from the highest levels to the lowest levels, to Zaman Dermir, together with this, was Ervet learn in Torah, he'll learn, teach Torah, he'll teach Torah to everybody. It says Mashiach will come and he'll teach even the non Jews, even the worst idolaters. It says they'll all turn to the creator of the universe who's creating them. And in addition, it says that the Mashiach will also teach the highest of the high. He'll teach Abraham, Isaac, he'll even teach Moses. Veter Zich Farnem, and he will, he will, he will uh, occupy himself with the lowest people, the poorest. Like it says, Veshapat Tzedek Dalim, he will judge with, with uh, the righteousness, the poor. Bizer Vet Polim, and he'll bring, even though Tzifoni, he'll bring even the Tzifoni, even the deepest secrets, Unzainanaga, to their, the lowest people will <clears throat> live according to the secrets of the Torah. And thus, also, and this is all depending on unzer itzdeker avoda. What we, me, and you do now, men are too great, too great, and we have to prepare a generation. Was oich kinder was all with all which which in which also children they should learn the inner secrets of the Torah, the Tanya, like we were learning in the morning. The Rashbi, like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, had Angazak said, but Dora the Mashiach, that in the generation of Mashiach, Vet Zain Azoy, it'll be so, V in Zain Dor, as Oich Rabi, Ravia. It'll be also in his generation that even children, Ravi is a child, Sai Kinder, whether we're talking about children that they're young in a in age, or Kinder, or they're young in understanding, appreciation of God. There are some people that could be 80 years old and they're still like little children as far as God goes. Then they'll learn in Panimus the Torah, they'll learn the inside secrets of the Torah. Everyone will learn the inside secrets of the Torah because that's what's keeping us alive, the Torah. One minute. Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, Torah by means of the, the teachings of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, then it'll be Kadai Havi Rabbi Shimon is smokal of It says. Rabbi Shimon can be relied on in difficult times. Whenever there's difficult times, Rabbi Shimon, you can just call on his name. His merit is sufficient to negate any bad things in the world via state, like it says in books. What does it mean? As Bashasa Meitzar, when there is difficult times, namely what's difficult times now in the time of exile, when we don't see God, we don't feel God, we don't even understand what God is. As Darf men zich farlazan, we can rely on Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, which he had taken on himself, accept on himself. He means Darf Achia Shiloni Imo. It says if you take Achia Hashiloni with him, so Patron in the Gansenville <clears throat> to negate the whole entire world from judgment until the days of the Mashiach. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said that I, up to now, can absolve the world from any, the Jewish people, from any bad things that they've done, I can absolve the world. And I can absolve the world, protect the world, to me together with Achia HaShiloni, and I'll explain who Achia HaShiloni is in a second, from the world from now, which that's like, you know, 1,800 years ago, until the days of the Mashiach. So Rabbi Shimon's merit stands on us for all this time of exile. <clears> that <throat> The Jewish people won't be punished too much over to they won't get which sometimes they deserve. Who is Achia Shiloni? It says Achia Shiloni was one of the people that left Egypt and he became the teacher and he lived a long time. He lived, um, you know, a th thousands of years how long he lived. It says Achia Shiloni. He, he also came and he taught the Baal Shem Tov, Achia Shiloni. Uh, to Baal Shem Tov, he was like 1,500 years. And it says, Achia Shiloni, he, he taught King David. I, I, or he was a pupil of King David, or he taught King David. But anyway, he was at the time of King David. Achia Shiloni. 
Achia Hashiloni, Achia, that was his name, Achia, he was the one that chose Yeruvim ben Navat to be the, he anointed him to be the king over the 10 tribes in the north. Unfortunately, there was a very unfortunate result from that. He, he ended up, he sinned and made everybody else sin. But nevertheless, he was the one that chose, says, Achia Hashiloni was infinitely, infinitely good. And he, together with Rabbi Shimon, <clears throat> says that their merits, that they defied all the bad in the world and brought only good into the world, was sufficient to <clears throat> protect the whole world, especially the Jewish people, until the days of the Mashiach. The high and what it, it says that <clears throat> Elijah the prophet said to Rabbi Shimon by Yochai, the high Dilach said, with this book of yours, with the book of the Zohar, Yifkon Bey will go out with it from the exile the Jewish people with mercy. It just translates it. As in veld, that as in veld, that in the world, vet nimshach verim will be drawn down all of the secrets that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai revealed in his book, the Zohar. Vos er is given hecher from Chorban. He says, Rabbi Shimon, who was higher than the exile. Remember, that's what we said, that when somebody tried to <clears throat> mourn, went into mourning, uh, Rabbi Avram Alevi was one of the pupils of the but of the, the Arizal, when he mourned on the day of Rabbi Shimon's passing away, which is a happy day, so it says he was punished because of it, because Rabbi Shimon was above the exile. He was mourning for the exile. He mourned every day, and when he mourned on that day, the Rabbi Shimon, remember we learned that a little earlier. And thus, that <clears throat> nimshach, this will be revealed into the whole entire world. The godliness of the Torah will be revealed to the whole world. On a feel that even Dorton, if that even there was fathered zich atikun, where has to be fixed up, biz is an orth even into a place vus is faran tuma where there's impurity. <clears throat> it says that eventually that Mashiach will ruach atuma avir min or so bring he'll remove all impurity from the world until there won't even be any death in the world. When oich dem ordi, that even pl that place will be a place of a dwelling for God, mitnor for Israel, not just for Jews, for regular Jews, or even for the Levites, but also for Kohanim. And there's the most delicate of Jews will be able to be there. Eden Jews v zei zayin and badarga shel ba'atem that you yederid that every single Jew says is a Kohen. That you are in a kingship of priests. <clears throat> It says that God is also considered to be a priest. As Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, will spread out to the whole world, and it was the holiness of Israel. The whole entire world will be like the land of Israel. What it means, it'll be revealed godliness. The whole world will be a dwelling for God, and all mankind will feel that there's a creator who creates them and loves them and provides for them and wants them to be his partners, everyone in the world. That'll be a happy world, a different world, and all the promises <clears throat> that are made in the Torah, and all the promises the, the, that, are, you know, that, that are promised by all these different political uh, ideas and systems and things like that, they'll be fulfilled. Every man will be happy. There won't be any more, how do you say, class differences. There won't be any more poverty. But there's things that even all these you know, religions and things, don't, they don't promise. There won't be any more sickness in this physical world. There won't be any more hatred in this physical world. Every human being will be a teacher to all mankind. And every human being will learn from every other person. That's why we need Mashiach now. And now I'll tell you a story. Let's just think about it. Right again.